This video was made possible by EA Game Changers. What's going on everyone? This is Ancap24 from playbook.gg and in today's video we're going to give you the top 5 passing tips on how to make you a better passer in Madden 20. Now if this is the first time checking out our channel and you want to win more games playing Madden, hit that subscribe button below. Don't forget to also click that bell icon to make sure you never miss any of our videos. Alright guys, we're going to dive right into our top 5 passing tips and at number 5, it's settling your feet before you throw. Now this tip may seem a little simple to some people, but it's going to be one of those deals that it's going to be the difference between completions and incompletions in Madden 20. With the inaccuracy penalties that were put into the game, you're going to want to have the ability to settle your feet whenever you can possible. Whether it's a deep ball where you get outside the pocket, whether it's something that you step into the pocket and make a strong throw, your ability to go ahead and settle your feet on your throw will make the difference between the arm strength and where you're able to put the ball. As you can see in these first couple examples, these are really about long balls getting the most behind each throw. But on this next example, I want to show you how you can step on the pocket and make sure that you've got your feet planted and make a strong throw to the outside. So this is where most throws are made in Madden inside the pocket. If you can get down the skill where you go ahead, go into practice mode, get a bunch of reps and learn how to slow down your feet to make sure they're planted before you throw, you're going to be that much more accurate in Madden 20. And next up at number four is knowing your hash marks and understanding how it affects play design. So for this example, guys, when I look at PA shot wheel at a gun trips tight end, if you do it to where you put the trips to the wide side of the field, so we're on the right hash mark here, you're going to see how spread out those wide receivers are. So when they run different route combinations, they're going to be able to do different things because of spacing that the zones are going to react differently. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this play for you. I'm going to show it to you where the wide receivers are now on the short side of the field. Same hash mark, but now you can see how they're all compressed. That changes the way zones work. So as you go through your plays, make sure you double check how it works the short side of the field, how it works the wide side of the field for consistent results. Now let's look at our number three on our list, which is gonna be using tight end delay hot routes. In Madden 20, there's a new mechanic that you have the ability to block your tight end with a delayed route and then have him go down the field once you release him. So if you look at this tight end on this play, what you're gonna see is that he's got this blue route. The blue route indicates a delay. You're gonna be able to see him block, and then you can release him by pressing his button, and then pressing the button again in order to get the catch up the field. You can see that was the delay fade. So again, what you would do is once you wanted to release him, his icon is the A button, so you'd press the A, and then when you wanted to throw it to him, you press it again. There are three different hot routes that you can do. This is gonna be the tight end flat one. We're gonna release him to the flat by pressing A, and you're gonna see how he's gonna be able to catch the ball and get up the field as we're able to drive back all the defenders because we had the tight end on a delay. So the last tight end delay route is gonna be the block and release cross, which is basically just a drag route. For all these examples, I'm showing you it against man coverage here in the beginning of the video because I wanna make sure you see that I believe this is gonna be best against man as those guys basically get driven off. But in this next couple examples, I'm gonna show it against uh, zone coverage. And what you're gonna see is with this player, sometimes the tight end gets moved to the middle and you go ahead and block and release. It actually goes in the path in which he was on. You can see that there, I'm gonna show you an instant replay here. Watch the tight end, see how he's blocking his player and he's actually going towards the middle of the field because that's where his block took him. I let him release and we're able to get up the field. I'll show you a different example with zone coverage. A lot of times, you know, this is gonna be a little bit more clean, but when you go ahead and release them, those players are gonna be covering different zones. They kind of dismiss that player and you're gonna be able to get some great yards. I'll show it to you one more time here on the flat one. I wanted to highlight this one because the, the route is actually red. When it's red, that just means he's the primary target. It's still gonna be delayed. You're gonna be able to throw it to him and really get some successful yards as you go ahead and cut up the field when you drive away those zones as well. So I'll go ahead and show you one more example of the delayed flat route that becomes the primary target and that's why it's red. And this is gonna be something that you're gonna be able to have a lot of fun with. You know, basically you get that extra blocker. And once you get him to block, it's really nice when you're going against people that are showing edge pressure as you're able to block it and then block them out to the release. Definitely a great passing tip for Madden 20. Let's go ahead and check out our number two, which is gonna be knowing your progression reads before the play even starts. So in this example, we're looking at Y sale. And what you're gonna see out of this play is something that's got a flood concept to the right with a tight end and a running back doing a high low. Then you've got this backside in. When you break this down, you should know my first read is I'm gonna look at the running back first. 
Then I'm going to look at the tight end second, and then I'm going to go ahead and look at the backside in third. In that order, so that way you can keep your eyes on one side of the field, go low to high on those reads. And if that's not open, transition you to player going towards the inside to make it easier on yourself. So I put this on random defense so I can go through the progressions. As you can see, we're going to look right first, tight end second, inside third. I'm going to go ahead on instant replay and kind of show it to you a little bit slower so you can understand it. What you're going to see is that you're looking at this running back. As I'm looking at this running back, I see that the linebacker is going to basically cover him to where it's going to be very little yards, if any, if I throw it to him. Then I'm going to go look at this tight end on its break. I have him there if I want to, but what I do is I notice that the middle of the field's open and I go back to the backside player because of the way that it was able to shape up. Now I'll run this again, I'm going to go through my reads. You can see that the running back is covered. I'm going to go to the tight end. I throw a low pass. It's a one-two read. You look at the first player. If he's covered, you go to the second player. Now you go here and you're looking at the reads and you see that the running back's wide open. You're going to be able to catch it and get up the field. So by going with your progressions, you're always going to be able to keep yourself diligent on the, the path and be able to hit the man that you're looking to hit. Now this is definitely something that we try to simplify for you in our playbook.gg game plans. Now the number one thing to do in order to be a better passer is work on your pocket presence. Now the best way to do that is just to go into practice mode, go into random defenses, let them blitz, whatnot, and just get a feel for the pocket. A tip that we like to show you here, and I'll show you on this instant replay, is you want to read your outside defenders. If your outside defenders start to get a win up the field, you're not going to want to back up as a quarterback. You're going to want to step into it because if you go backwards, you're going right into their passing lanes. In order to buy time, it's not always going backwards. It's finding the lane in order to pass through. Now, sometimes that lane does not mean step up. It means to shuffle over. As you can see in this one, I'm basically buying time by shuffling away from the blitz. I'm going to show you an instant replay. We have a blitz coming from the right side. And I need to make sure that I have the ability to kind of throw this ball going from right to left. And what you'll see here is once my team goes ahead and picks it up, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle left. I stop and I'm about to throw the ball here. Then I realize I got more time and I shuffle one more time over to make a better throw. So in this next example, what I'm going to do is going to show you where I feel the pressure coming from one side, move to, to the left, and then I realize I've got blockers there, and I move back to the middle because that's where the strength of my team is. But I'll show you an instant replay to kind of show it a little bit better. And what you're going to see is that you're going to feel pressure from the right, just like we did in the last play, and we want to move to the left to kind of set up our blocks. So you see that I scoot to the left. Once I notice that my left tackle has that player, I scoot back to the middle because now I've got better protection to make sure that I settle my feet, and throw that ball right on a strike in the middle of the field. So for this next sample, guys, I want to do a gun bunch five out type look. And it's really more about looking at certain things to get the cues. Now, this didn't look very tough, but I wanted to make sure that you see what I was looking at. An instant replay, look at the end on the right side of the screen. What I was looking at him as my cue. When he got up the field, I basically stepped up in the pocket. But when he, I go ahead and step up in the pocket, he's going to turn and come back at me, putting me on a timer that I got to get the ball out of my hand. Watch it closely here. Look at the right screen. He turns, and then he goes ahead and goes back. Once I see that, I need to get the ball out of my hand, or it's going to be a sack. Things that you need to know when you're in the pocket. Like I mentioned before, guys, the best way to do this is go into practice mode. Don't care about how many sacks you take. Don't care about how many times that you throw incompletions. Just get a presence for cues that you want to use when you're going to uh, basically make your decision of how you're going to navigate through the pocket. Sometimes you're going to have to step up. Sometimes you have to slide step left, slide step back right. It's really just being able to make sure that you've got that ability to feel comfortable and use it for an advantage and help your overall passing game in Madden 20. Now, if you like this video, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out these videos below for the most helpful Madden tips. If you're looking to learn from the best players in the world, head over to www.playbook.gg for the most detailed game plans in Madden.